Today we are talking about Napoleon Hill, best known for his book, you might have heard of Think and Grow Rich. There's this cult around Napoleon Hill saying that he's this great guy and he was on this great mission to teach people about the laws of su success. But in reality, he was just a scam artist. Went broke many times in his life. You know, he would uh, fake and alter checks. He would do mail fraud. He, he stole cars. So his first job was working at this newspaper, writing for the news. And when there was nothing exciting enough happening, he would just make stories up. News that is not real. There should be some kind of word for that. And there's a secret Napoleon Hill archive filled with his dirty secrets. Even his Wikipedia page says that he only had three marriages, when actually he had five. So one of his first all-out scams was this lumber business. He would buy lumber from people on credit and sell it to people. He got about $20,000 worth of lumber. And in today's money, this is about $500,000 that he scammed from people. So he was forced to move. He moved to DC. He changed his name. He changed his backstory. Started telling people that he, he was a car mechanic. So he starts this car business, right? During these times, uh, you know, early 1900s, cars are like the big meme. They're, it's like Bitcoin now. So he starts this car mechanic school where he tells people he can bring people in, teach them how to be, uh, how to work on cars in six weeks and be able to make six figure equivalent. But this business, it was all just a scam to get free labor, to get people to work on cars for him for free. And you know, he would like have his students fill out like questionnaires designed to figure out how much money they had so he can figure out how much money he can suck out of them. Eventually like the whole like car school thing wasn't working out too well probably because his students didn't know what they were doing. Then he switches it up and kind of makes it a uh, car salesmanship school and he makes it an MLM where you can get uh, money for referring people to these schools and also what he would do is he would lend money to people so that they could pay for the school. He was providing student loans for them at 5% interest. But like, it's like the money's going to him. It's like, yeah, pay me interest so I can put money back into my own pocket. This guy, Napoleon Hill, he's like, he's like on another level. He's playing four dimensional chess. So eventually he gets married to this girl fresh out of high school, a daughter of a United States congressman, and his wife's family is able to get him a job at this university or something. And then he starts printing out business cards that says he's a lawyer. He just lies about everything throughout his life. Lies about his connections, his status, everything. So after he's done with that job, eventually he starts this uh, self-help school to teach people about success. And he has these students teaching them success, but the company is mostly just a scheme to sell stock to investors. You know, in those days, the company was worth maybe $1,200. And he was selling shares in this company at a valuation of $100,000 in 1900s money. So he'd get people to invest and give him his money, and then he'd just keep the money. He also started this uh, Golden Rule magazine where he would uh, give famous people awards so that his name would appear in newspapers, the Napoleon Hill Award or whatever. Very sneaky self-promotion tactics with this guy. And we're just scratching the surface now. After this, he started this fake charity that was supposed to uh, help uh, inmates in jail recover and readjust to a normal life. He started this company as a scheme to one, get one of his old mail fraud buddies out of jail. And two, he's also collecting donations for this charity. He's going to schools 
and he's taking money from everybody, even school children. Eventually, people find out, they ask the prison if they've received any money. They haven't. 100% of the money went into their pockets, and the whole scheme collapsed. So later on, he publishes his first book, The Law of Success. And he told people that Andrew Carnegie, who was dead by this point, personally told him to go around interviewing the greatest people and figuring out the secrets of success and to write this book the law of success. You know, he told people that he was an advisor for Woodrow Wilson, the president. He told people he was an advisor for FDR too. And that he even came up with the phrase, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. All those were lies. He never met Andrew Carnegie or any of these people. He did meet Thomas Edison though, to try to give him uh, one of his prizes. And he got this picture with Edison I think when he handed him the medal, he just handed it right back and didn't say anything. And this book actually did well. He was making like $30,000 in today's money a month from the royalties from this book. Him and his wife, you know, they went crazy. They bought Rolls Royce, bought a new large house. And eventually, a few years later, they were completely broke. Yeah, at one point he said he was going to turn his house into like a university for elite rich people to come brush up on their success skills, but that never happened. He writes another book, Magic Ladder to Success. It flops horribly. So he's trying to drum up more, uh, more sales from his book for Law of Success. And he has this idea to have this contest to turn Law of Success into a movie script, into a full feature movie. And he gets all these high school students and everything in on this uh, big writing contest. But it's all just a scheme to sell more books. It doesn't really work, so he goes back to his old game of selling stock to investors, taking money from people. Now, what about Think and Grow Rich? What about that? Where does it come in? He's lecturing one day on success, and he's talking about how he's looking for uh, a wife and everything. One of the girls in his lecture meets up with him and they get married like two days later, literally. And with the help of his wife, he's able to write the book, Think and Grow Rich. Just think and grow rich. What can be easier? What can be a better title? And his wife helps him like edit. So the book is actually wildly, wildly successful and he makes a whole bunch of money. He's out of poverty again. He gets the new house, the new cars, fancy clothes. They start spending extravagantly. And of course, a few years after this, he goes broke. So with his new wife, who's just as scammy as him, now that they're broke, they're trying to uh, come up with a PR stunt to sell more books, sell more Think and Grow Rich. They start telling the news media that they're planning to adopt 15 kids and that they're gonna raise these kids to be the top kids of the world. And it's an experiment on raising kids. Yeah, they never adopt 15 kids. The two of them get divorced eventually. And then Napoleon Hill's back to his old scams, his old starting fake charities. And he's like 70 years old at this point. So he dies with very little money and people still praise his name to this day. He was like the first person to really make a, a self-help book. And his influence is everywhere. His influence is on the law of attraction. His influence is on Tony Robbins. But I'm not trying to say like, oh, everybody's stupid and a retard for following this guy. But I think now that you know that he was just a career scammer, you know, you really look at those books differently. You think, huh, is this book really supposed to help me or is it just supposed to make me feel good? That's Napoleon Hill. That's his legacy. He was good at making people feel good.